Welcome to Stack AI. In this video, I'll walk you through the Stack AI platform so you can be off to the races building automations and agents in no time. I'll show you how to create and publish a workflow, manage connections to your databases and APIs, see project analytics, and manage your projects and teams. We'll start from the dashboard. And on the left-hand panel, you'll see that there's four options, projects, knowledge bases, connections, and project analytics. Let's start with projects, and we'll come back to these options in a little bit. You can see a simple get started screen, but if you already have projects, you'll see them in each of the individual folders, and you can click new project to create a new project. Quick start option, as you might guess, allows you to really quickly get up and running with a chat GPT-like app in no time. Let's take a look at the workflow builder. When I click create, I'm taken to a template screen. Here you can find all sorts of different templates organized by use case or integration. You can browse these and find a great spot to start your project. Let's pick the knowledge base agent, which will allow us to build a simple app that lets a person chat with an AI agent that has access to very specific files. Click use template. When I do this, I'm taken into the workflow builder canvas. I can zoom in, zoom out, pan around, and click on each of these individual starting point building blocks. The workflow builder has five main sections, the workflow canvas, the left-hand panel, the export slash user interface area, analytics, and the manager function. A workflow has logic and individual building blocks. A user interacts with this workflow from the user interface in the workflow panel. A workflow can have many different forms, whether it's a chat assistant, form, a chatbot, a Chrome extension, Slack op, and many more. Let's go back to the workflow tab and have a closer look at what this app is doing. We have four individual building blocks. These building blocks map to items that you can drop down from the left-hand panel. Inputs that allow you to get input from a user. Outputs which allow you to display or allow the workflow to take action. Large language models from a number of different providers which can do the thinking and reasoning work in your application. As well as apps you can interface with. Knowledge bases for connecting data. Document readers for summarizing and transcribing. Logic for adding different logical flows into your app and different utility functions. In this workflow, we can allow a user to ask a question in this form interface, then give our application access to other documents or select a knowledge base, pass that data on to our large language model, and then see an output. As you're building out a workflow, you can click the Run button to run all of the steps in it. So let's just add a simple question here. How many colors are there? You can click Run, and you can see each of those steps running in the Run Progress panel. And we can see the output here, which Anthropic generated from Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I know this is a lot to take in on your first overview. We'll cover all of these components in more detail in future videos. Let's take a look at the Analytics tab, where you can see high-level metrics on when the workflow is run, how many tokens it's used, how many runs and users, etc. In the Manager view, you can manage all of the different conversations that are happening with your app across your organization. When your app is complete, click Publish, Confirm, and now you can go to your export view and see the URL for your app. When you click that, you can open up your app and ask it any sort of questions you like. Let's return to the main dashboard and cover the last few features. Here we can see the knowledge base agent we just created. And on the left-hand side, we can see a list of folders and all of the different projects that exist across our organization. If you archive a project, you can find it at the very bottom in the archives where you can then go and restore the project or delete it permanently. Further on the left-hand side, you can see the connections panel, which allows you to create, store, and manage all of the different credentials for your different API-based systems so that when you connect to an external service, those credentials are stored securely. The knowledge bases section allows us to create a knowledge base for our agents and projects. The knowledge base can take advantage of one of our connections to, for instance, a SharePoint server, a Notion server, Google Drive, and many more. You can also upload files directly here and give your knowledge base a name and analytics where you can see overall analytics for all of your projects and lastly if you go to the lower left hand corner to your user profile you can find all of your admin settings for your individual account and your organization and to end we want you to know that security comes first for stack ai you can browse to stack-ai.com forward slash security to find our SOC 2 type 2 gdpr and hipaa documents that covers the basics of the Stack AI platform. Join me in the next video where we will build a workflow from scratch using the Workflow Builder.